In this video, I am going to show you the complete design and detailing of reinforced concrete shear wall for dual system. The given parameters are FC prime 6 KSI and FY 60 KSI. It is a 30 story building. The slab is 8 inches thick. Beam size is 12 by 36 inch. The column size is 36 by 12. 18 and 24 by 18 as shown on layout. The seismic zone is 3, soil tap SD and importance factor of 1. It is a dual system. The live load is 40 PSF and SDL is 36 PSF. The wind speed is 80 miles per hour for exposure C and importance factor of 1. We have to calculate thickness of shear wall for the whole building and design reinforcement for shear wall 5 of the ground floor using E tabs and Excel checks and the detailing using AutoCAD. The wind and seismic load is to be applied using UPC 97 and design code is ACS Raven 8 14. The layout of the building is shown. We have to design shear wall 5. So theoretical background here. A shear wall distinguishes from a column in plan if the dimensions for length to thickness ratio is greater than 4 then it's a shear wall otherwise it, it's a column in practice there are three lateral force resisting types moment resisting frame it is a structural system with complete space frame for gravity loads and moment resisting frame supporting for lateral loads building frame system for which we designed shear wall in the previous video it is a structural system with complete space frame for gravity and lateral load while dual system resistance to lateral load is provided by shear wall or brace frames. It is engineers call whether to use dual system or building frame when shear walls are present. Usually in high seismic zone we use dual system. Strength reduction factor for our case are shown from the book whose reference is mentioned for flexure and shear design and strength reduction factor for shear walls plus SMRF is 8.5 and the reference is mentioned from the book modeling dual system in ETABS in order to model dual system in ETABS we have to use property modifiers and the scale factors for earthquake it is required that at least 25% of the lateral load for seismic and wind is carried by frames hence we modify the scale factor of load to at least 25% of the original base shear to be registered by the frame as first model which will be used for frame design while a second model is made for wall design which will be used in this video for the design of shear wall in wall model we will use property modifiers for wall as 0.7 and check the ultimate combinations for the shell stresses if the stresses tensile stresses exceed modulus of rupture then we use 0.35 or if does not exceed then we will use 0.7 for shear and flexure the detailing of column and beam in dual system is carried out using the respective framing type that is omrf imrf or smrf a third model for a stability check such as drift and torsion will be made which will involve the column and wall modifiers which were used in their respective design models and the earthquake loading will be applied would be unscaled if using unscaled seismic load cases column take less than 25 percent then the wall design wall model for the percentage before amplifying the seismic load using scale factor and apply 25 percent of the original base shear to the frames if using unscaled seismic load columns take 25 percent or more than the base shear then the design wall for the remainder percentage of steel you don't need to amplify base shear and design walls and columns will be done using same model now starting with modeling of the structure first we will be defining the grids as we were shown in the layout the spacings are input number of stories and the story heights
defining the material properties for concrete that is 6 ksi for steel material property that is 60 ksi grade 60 now we will be defining the section properties for this slab the slab is 8 inches thick using crack modifier for this slab using ACI code Defining the column properties, selecting the steel for the columns. This portion becomes useless if it is selected reinforcement tool designed. Now modifying the stiffness of the column. For dual system, we will consider columns stiffness as 0.7. Now defining the property for the next column that was 24 by 18 inches. The depth of the column was 24 inches. Now adding the property for the beam cross section. B12 by 36 and the material property is 6 KSI. Selecting the steel for the beam. Now the property modifiers for the beam using ACI code chapter 10 is 0.35 of IG. The original constant is taken as 0 0.001 because I don't want torsion to be incorporated in the meme it's a choice it's not mentioned in the code but it's just an engineering judgment defining the properties for the wall sections since we are to calculate the required thickness of the wall so we will define multiple cross sections starting from 15 inches roughly for crack moment of inertia Initially taking S.7 as per AC and crack section, then we will check using modulus of rupture. If the stress exceeds 580, 581 psi, then we will use 0.35 for the walls. Right now taking S.7. <coughs> Defining the next section for, for the wall, let's take it as 18 inches, increments of 3 inches. You can also refine your results by taking increments of 1 inches or 2 inches. Let's take in now adding 24 inches. Now we will select the auto select option so that ETAPS itself calculate the required thickness of the wall. Actually auto select option walls. 
here let's name it as auto select auto select list select the walls which you want to be now the starting property is based on the thickness of the wall now we are done with defining the wall auto select list so the next thing we will be doing is defining the load patterns for our case earthquake in x direction using upc 97 similarly earthquake in y direction earthquake x drift check earthquake y drift check and the wind load using qbc 97 now we have to start with seismic parameter calculation seismic zone 3 and frame is moment resisting special moment resisting frame so we have to use the zone factor of 0.3 UBC 97 chapter 16 tables are used coefficient of CA and CV are shown and the value of CT for buildings 0.02 apart from moment resisting frame and the strength reduction factor is 8.5 for special case We use 8.5 as per code requirements. The soil type is SD. Earthquake Drift X. The same parameters will be defined, but the only difference would be scale factor, which we will define in the next step we will edit the wind load once we have modeled the structure the maximum inelastic drift is computed as follows Maximum inelastic drift is 0.7 times strength reduction factor and maximum elastic drift. So the scale factor to be used in our case is to be incorporated here. Since we don't want this to be considered in design, so we are taking as other. And the scale factor is 5.95. That is 0.7 times R. We don't want the drift check to be incorporated in design because it is scaled up to actual inelastic drift. Now since we have to include live load, the criteria's reference is given using ASC 7 code. In areas used for storage, a minimum of 25% live load in public garages is to be used adding the live load 25 percent <coughs> so we are done with defining the mass source here Now we will start modeling the structure.
selecting the auto select option for the wall and type of area is pf now drawing the beams Careful not to draw the memes where the shield wall is present. Usually in dual system internal beams are present as the space frames and the shear wall resist the seismic load together unlike in building frame system which we used to design shear wall in the previous video we didn't have internal beams but in dual system you will find internal beams as a connection between shear wall and the space frames <coughs> now modeling this lab So now done we are done with modeling the structure of one story now then we will replicate the rest to the rest of the stories except base since the structure is replicated we will view it in 3d now select using control a the whole structure and assign the diaphragms to the structure diaphragm is used for lateral load distribution to the members respective of their rigidities now for wind load pattern we will take 0.8 for windward and 0.5 for leeward which is already taken by ETA now the wind speed given was 80 miles per hour and the exposure category was C now you can check once the structure is modeled the perimeters used by EDFs at 0 and 90 degrees we will go to design and select special moment resisting frame which is already selected here so that the beam column are designed according to the special moment resisting frame criteria and meet the minimum limitations of the frame the SDS value is to be taken as 2.5 times CA that is 0.9 in our case similarly for the shear wall we will take SDS value as 2.5 times CA that is 0.9 CA's value was computed using UPC 97 tables shown in the initial part of the video defining seismic parameters <coughs> defining wall peers as we were shown on the layout namely wall 1 to 6 So we have hidden rest of the elements apart from the wall. 
so that we can assign the peers I will go to do elevation number C for assigning the wall name but first we had to go to elevation number 2 elevation number 5 assign this wall as shear wall 1 as we were shown on the layout in the beginning of the video and assign this wall as wall number 2 as shown on layout now opening elevation number 3 Elevation number 2 So this is Shear wall 3 To do first we had to select the window now assign this peer label as shear wall number 3 now this wall is shear wall number 4 and for shear wall number 5 we will go to elevation C And this is the shear wall we are supposed to design in this video. And for shear wall number 6, so now we are done with assigning the peer labels to the walls, which you can check here wall 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 so now we will select the design code for the walls that is ACI 31814 and the fire shear and fire lecture as we have shown from the reference for from the book in the beginning of the video the load combinations are to be added default shear wall combinations using ACI code and let's check randomly whether it has taken drift combinations or not which should not have to be incorporated in design now defining an envelope to check the modulus of rupture whether the stresses are exceeding modulus of rupture or not so we are supposed to add all the ultimate combinations here for the wall design and if these stresses will exceed modulus of rupture which was 581 psi so we will revise the wall property modifiers as 0.35 instead of 0.7 Now we will define the meshing settings for the floors and the walls. Let's take maximum mesh size as 3 feet for accuracy purposes. Wall and floor mesh size is usually taken as same. Now for P delta effects we have to include that live load as 0.5 if we are using the combination for the design as shown. 
and cons- it is conservatively taken as 50% of the live load in p delta based on iterative loads and the live load is to be included as 0.5 times I will go to the base of the structure and make the support of the columns and walls as fixed. I will run the analysis and save the model. Now once the analysis is run, we will check for the stresses first standing on the visibility of the walls only. Before that we have to do one more thing that we have to select the thickness of the wall since we are on auto select option so we have to make the thickness uniform in first place. Then we will check for the envelope stresses. Now we will check whether which section ETABS has used from the auto select list based on the thickness starting from the least thickness. So now we will go to elevation number C. and turn on the labels or sections of the walls used so the wall sections used here by ETAS are almost same that is 18 inches so ETAS has assigned an 18 inches wall throughout from the auto select list let's check in 3d is there anything else it e has used apart from 18 inches so far it is 18 inches taken by e tabs so now we will manually assign the whole wall as 18 inches and then run the analysis again Now running the analysis after assigning the walls property as 18 inches which was calculated using ETAPS. I will check for the shell stresses using the envelope which we defined. Go for shell stresses and visible face ok. Let's check for the normal stresses. Now you see the stresses are exceeding a lot. The 1.7, 3.4, 5.1 means exponent 3. They are multiplied by an exponent 3. That means 1.7 means 1700 psi. Let's make the units uniform. So they are definitely exceeding our limit of 581 PSI. So we are supposed to use drag moment of inertia here. 
but we will always try that we use uncracked moment of inertia so that the forces in walls are attracted higher so we will do an iteration by revising the thickness of the wall let's say we have taken the thickness as 18 inches now so we will make the thickness as 21 inches as we were supposed to go by increment of 3 here so we will make the thickness increase and then check whether the stresses are exceeding 581 psi or not and if still they would be exceeding then we will finally revise the modifiers so the stresses are exceeding 581 psi for now We will apply a maximum range so that the uniform colors will show that the they are exceeding the range. Let's take the stress range as ten thousand so that you can see here. The stresses are exceeded on the top. The tensile stresses exceeding the modulus of rupture is usually on the top here and in middle part of the wall. Now we will unlock the model and revise the thickness and see if the stresses fall below the modulus of rupture or not. Revise the thickness from 18 inches to 21 inches and then rerun the analysis analysis speed is enhanced 26 percent 26 times now we will check for the shell stresses again So still these stresses are exceeding the limit. So now finally we will revise the property modifiers for the wall from 0.7 to 0.35 that is using cracked moment of inertia for the walls. Previously we were using uncracked moment of inertia. Now we will design the wall on the basis of cracked moment of inertia. Now we will go to the base of the structure and check how much percentage of the base shear is attracted by the frames and how much percentage is attracted by the walls. We will use an excel sheet here for the case. First I am selecting all the points where the frames are present only. Go to show tables and joint reactions. So we are to select the earthquake case 1 and the joint is to be selected show selection only. Since we have selected EX so we will go for selecting the FX. Now we will paste the loads in the excel sheet. So these are column based shear reactions in x direction now we will select make the selection for the walls and go to show selection only so now we are seeing here in form of fx is the base shear attracted by the walls which we will paste in base shear attracted by the walls in x direction column now 
or for the y direction you will select the frames first and go for load case EY1 EY1 and EY2 3 are separated because of the eccentricities considered by ETAPS usually we have to consider the eccentricities cases as well but just for a quick review we are taking the non-eccentric earthquake loadings for the comparison here now for the walls you will go so selection only and FY since the load case is selected in Y direction so the reaction on walls in y direction from the earthquake in y case now you see total base shear in x direction is shown and the total base shear in y direction is also shown the percentage attracted by the columns is 3 and a minimum percentage which we require is 25 percent so this excel sheet will provide you a scale factor to be used in the column design model So a factor of 8.16 in x direction is to be used in column design model and a scale factor of 3.518 is to be used in seismic load in column design model. But right now we are designing the shear wall so we won't be using the scale factor for the seismic load in this model. So now we are done with calculating the scale factors for the column model. Now we will check the limits for drift due to seismic loading, drift due to wind loading and torsional irregularity since it is a high rise structure. Now we will find the time period of the structure using the model. So the time period of the structure is 1.9 seconds. So the time period is 1.993 seconds which is greater than 0.7. Hence the limit for the drift ratio is 0.02. Now we'll go to show tables and displacements for the story drifts. Here we have to select the combinations for drift only. Press control key to select the others as well. Sort the values in descending order. So the maximum value show will be shown here in the top. The maximum value is less than the limit. Hence the drift limit due to seismic is under control. Now we will check the drift limit due to wind loading. First, we'll check for the torsional irregularity. We have to unselect the envelope cases and select the rest of the things. So the ratio is 1.2 we will consider which is less than 
or equal to 1.2 so we will consider a neglect point double zero one here so the building is torsionally regular now wind drift limit is 0.25 percent of the story height so we will check for the wind drift limit here by going to story drifts and press ok and select the wind load cases only you can also check the wind drift on the wind drift combinations so selecting the wind load cases here which is less than 0 0.0025 so the wind drift is in the control now we'll run the design for the wall since the cross sections thicknesses are finalized and are stable Now we'll check for the reinforcement in the walls. We will go to elevation C since we have to design the shear wall number 5 only. Go to display and show tables and check whether the shear reinforcement in shear wall is less than at least 1% which is difficult to place in the shear walls. So we will see that it is not heavily reinforced. So the reinforcement was within control so that is okay. Now you will display design info. Reinforcing ratios. So the reinforcing ratios are uniform or decreasing upwards is normal. But the reinforcement on the top is higher. So for this case we can provide a higher percentage of reinforcement in top which is an exceptional case but usually if the intermediate or the middle zone reinforcement comes higher then we will provide the higher percentage of reinforcement in the bottom part as well. Make the units in millimeter square. So that we can use the excel sheet for detailing purposes. You can also find the link in description to download the excel sheet. First we have to provide the dimensions of the wall. That is 21 inches thick and the length is 60 feet. The height of the wall that means that the height of the floor or the height of the pier that is 10 feet. Now the required pier reinforcement from ETAPS is shown here 24387 millimeter square. The required spacing is 301 we can provide a lesser spacing and the sheet will also apply the checks 
we provided 300 mm spacing so it is automatically incorporated in the detail now for the horizontal reinforcement from e tabs we will go back to e tabs result and click on peer reinforcing ratios it is in millimeter square per meter and the excel sheet is designed for this condition so we will input the uniform shear reinforcing per meter as shown from the e tabs Now let's select the I-16 bar provided reinforcing spacing is 300 mm so which shows ok if we provided a higher spacing than the requirements of basics then it would show decrease spacing so the detailing is automatically done here now we'll copy the detailing to AutoCAD. Since we are using a dia 16 bar, so we will write here for the main bar as dia 16 at 300 mm center to center. Similarly, for the distribution or shear reinforcement here, the horizontal steel is dia 16 at 300 millimeter center to center so the shear wall 5 is done with design perspective per conservatively we can check for the percentage of the steel the shear wall reinforcement limitations which we have applied in excel sheet but for theoretical point of view the maximum percentage of reinforcement in shear wall the minimum percentage is 0.25% and a minimum of 2 layers of reinforcement is provided if the wall is 10 inch thick or more. The spacing of main steel is shown that is 3 times thickness 18 inch or length of wall divided by 3. And for horizontal shear reinforcement the limitations are also shown. Now there is another thing I would like to show for shear wall options in e-tabs we will go to detailing and select detailing preferences in US system. You can also view a 3D cage reinforcement view from e-tabs. The splice length is 60 times diameter bar roughly. Since we are using dia 16 bar that means number 5 bar. So we will select number 5 bars here in order to view the detailing according to our requirements. I will go to start detailing option so it will start detailing the shear wall according to our requirements first it will make a reinforcement plan according to which it will name the shear walls and then the reinforcement elevations which you can always import or export to AutoCAD or any other software such as Revit once the detailing sheets are prepared by eTabs itself. So the detailing is almost done here.
you can go to detailing tab but first remember to save the model drawing sheet components here include wall details wall views and the reinforcement cage views plus drawing sheets here which includes wall reinforcement elevations plans now first we will go to check for wall reinforcement cage views let's go for cw1 that is on left side the shear wall shown on the left side which is our case shear wall number 5 So you can see the 3D view of shear wall reinforcement from ETAB itself which is shown here. So it also shows the location of the lap in the reinforcement. So you can always check for this in the detailing preferences here. Subscribe to the channel for much more tutorials to come soon.